I always bring two drones with me whenever I go out and take some aerial footage. I got my Mavic 3 and my Mini 3 Pro. I used to carry the Mini 2 as my sub 250 gram backup, but I upgraded and ever since I've been carrying the Mini 3 Pro for the same reason that sub 250 gram drones are not bound by rules. Hello Canadian drone pilots and to everyone else watching right now. What is going on? It's nice to see you again. If this is your first time here, my name is Roy and you are watching Creative Aerial Shots. I fly drones for fun and I mainly do this hobby on the weekend. I plan some of my flights but most of the time I just do a quick planning once I get to a potential fly spot. When I'm driving around and I see a nice location, I stop by and check if I can fly my drone there. I pull up my phone, check in the app if the airspace is restricted or not. When I'm in controlled airspace, I can't just fly my Mavic 3. Even drone pilots with advanced license still need approved Nav Canada authorization to fly in controlled airspace. This is one of the times that big guns don't work. So I pull out the smaller gun because my subject is waiting and I don't have time for paperwork. This is a sub 250 gram drone and Transport Canada officially calls it a micro RPA. If you hear the word micro or sub 250, we are talking about drones weighing under 250 grams. If your drone hits 250 grams or higher, because of the accessories attached to it. It is no longer a micro drone. It is now under the small RPA category. These are drones weighing 250 grams up to 25 kilograms. And you need to register it with Transport Canada and you need a license to fly it. But today, we are talking about micro drones. They are getting very popular because people don't need to register it and don't need a license to fly it. And basically, they are not bound by rules. Wait, is that really the case? Transport Canada regulates drones based on weight categories and not on intended use. Whether your drone is for a hobby or business, the rules are the same. And there are three different weight categories of drones here in Canada. The micro RPA, which weighs under 250 grams. A small RPA weighing 250 grams up to 25 kilos. And we don't have a special name for the third one. It's just called RPA or remotely piloted aircraft. These are the drones weighing over 25 kilos. So these are massive drones. The part nine of the Canadian Aviation Regulations focuses on the small RPA category. These are the drones weighing 250 grams up to 25 kilos. For drones weighing above 25 kilos, they all need SFOC or Special Flight Operation Certificate. The micro drone being the tiniest among the weight categories obviously presents the lowest risk which is why it is out of the spotlight when talking about drone regulations. But there is one regulation that does apply to micro drones. It is none other than the CARS 900.06, which states that no person shall operate a remotely piloted aircraft system in such a reckless or negligent manner as to endanger or be likely to endanger aviation safety or the safety of any person. The drone community calls this the don't be an idiot rule. This rule simply says don't fly in such a manner that you might endanger other airspace users or people on the ground. Transport Canada doesn't prescribe any other regulation to micro drone pilots other than the don't do anything stupid rule. So technically, flights in almost any type of airspace including controlled airspace, are allowed as long as you're not a hazard. Flights near airports are allowed as long as you're not a hazard. 
It can fly over people, over roadways, railways, buildings, and bridges as long as you're not a hazard. There are no distance or altitude restrictions on micro drones as long as you are not a hazard. But since micro drones are considered navigable aircraft, flights into restricted airspace such as over prisons or military installations are forbidden without permission from the airspace operator. No TAMS or notices to airmen describes a no-fly zone perimeter to all aircraft, including micro drones. Typically, a no TAM is published for airspace surrounding forest fires, natural disasters, or air shows. So you cannot fly over these areas. And also, keep yourself from flying close to emergency perimeters like road accidents, for example, because you might be in the way of an air ambulance. There are also other rules that we need to follow aside from Transport Canada. And they apply to all weight categories. For example, the Privacy Act and the Criminal Code. You can't use your drone to stalk or spy on someone. You can't use your drone to harass or hurt people. These rules are very self-explanatory. There's also the Migratory Bird Act. We're not allowed to disturb wildlife. I also just found out that you can't use a drone to locate your game if you hunt. I don't hunt, but it's good to know about these rules. National parks in Canada don't allow drones without prior permission. Most provincial parks don't allow drones without prior permission. I said most because some of them do allow drones. Most municipal governments will have bylaws preventing drone use on city property, including parks, sidewalks, or roadways without prior permission. And this can include launching your drone from your car or boat. But don't worry, because there are tools that you can use to identify these areas, such as the drone site selection tool, the Nav Drone app from Nav Canada, and my favorite, the Drone Pilot Canada app. But if you're not sure and you don't know what you're doing, there's tons of resources on the internet. Ask someone who knows. It's always better to be safe than sorry. Thank you everyone for watching and I really love sharing these things with you. I'll see you on the next one.